C4D Lite is a great way to start learning 3D software. If you're a designer, illustrator, 2D animator, and are interested in learning C4D, but are hesitant to splurge on the software, you need not worry, because C4D Lite comes with every Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. You just need to make sure that your After Effects app is up to date. Okay, so the way that you launch C4D Lite with Creative Cloud is actually through After Effects. So make sure that you have your After Effects application updated and then open it up, go to File, New, Maxon Cinema 4D File. It's gonna ask you where you wanna save it to. Okay. And then right here, it's opening up C4D, but it might ask you to register. So once you're good and registered, it'll be able to launch. So now I'm in C4D. And mine might look a little different from yours because I have the full license, but you should still be able to follow along. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a text clean. So I've got my text clean here. And if I go here into the object manager, you can see it here too. If I select it, I can go down here to the attributes under text clean, and I can change what it actually says. So hey, there's our text. Right here under font, you can change the font. I'm going to go ahead and go with Cooper. And here you could also change the alignment. Middle, right, left. I'm going to go with middle. The height is the size of it. We've got horizontal spacing. We've got kerning. We have options for kerning, tracking. And if you hit this show 3D GUI, you get these little handles for each individual letter that you could go ahead and turn manually. I'm going to turn that off. And now to make our text 3D, we have to add an extrude. And you do that by going to this menu, hold down and click, and hit extrude. Then in the object manager, select your text plane drag it under the extrude till you get that little arrow. And now we got 3D type. And the way that you navigate in C4D is by, you could, you could use these little controls up here. So this little hand pans around, this arrow zooms in and out, and this right here rotates around. But another easier way and a way that I think um, everybody should learn because it's it's, just makes everything a lot easier is actually by using the one, two, three keys. So if you press one, hold down, and then you click and drag, it pans around. If you press two and hold down and click and drag, it zooms in and out. If you press three and hold it down and click and drag, then you can rotate around. So it's as easy as one, two, three. Okay, so now I'm going to add some color. And the way you do that is by creating a material. And you create a material right here in the, in the material manager. So I'm going to go to this create menu, go to materials, and you've got a bunch of different options, but I'm just going to go with standard material. And there you go, standard material. An easier way to do it is by, I'm just going to delete this. You just go in this general area and you double click. You can keep adding more and more materials. So I'm going to go ahead and double click right here. Then I get this window with a bunch of different options that I could work with with my material. So right here, you've got like transparency that makes it see through, got glow to make stuff glow. But I'm only going to focus on color for now. And the way that you could change the colors is right here with these little sliders. You could also add a hex code right here if you hit this little pound sign and add your hex code right here. Also got this color wheel. And in the color wheel, you actually have different um, color harmonies. So you've got complementary, tertiary, and a bunch of other ones. You could even add your own um, image that you want to drive colors from. And that's by hitting this little mountain icon. Then you hit the folder, 
right here, grab whatever picture you want to reference, then you grab this little circle and you drag it around and it'll change into that color. I'm going to go back to the color wheel. I'm going to go back to this one and I'm going to make it green. Then I'm going to rename my material right here. Green. And the way that you apply your material is by, you could just drag it onto your geometry or you could drag it onto your object manager right here onto the extrude. So pretty cool. I'm going to go back into the extrude and show you a little bit on um, how that works. So under extrude, when you have it selected and you go to the object tab, you can offset the extrusion right here. So you can make it go deeper or make it shorter. And even though it kind of like caps out at a thousand right here, you can actually keep pushing further through the field. And the same goes for the other way. Now for caps, you could turn off, you know, your front cap or your back cap, or you, you could even turn off both. And then you get this wireframe look. I'm gonna turn mine back on. Right here in bevel, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see a little better. If you look at the edge, I go to size, and then it makes my, my edges round. Another fun one to play around with is step. This one gives you some, some interesting effects. I'm going to go back to round, make it a bit smaller. So now it's got a nice, more softer look to it. Under selections, if I, so this is how you can select different parts of your extruded um, spleens. So I'm going to check the start cap. And the start cap is this front facing cap. And when I check this on, it created a little selection tag. And I'm going to show you how you can use that tag. So I'm going to make another material. I'm going to make this one pink color. And I'm going to rename it pink. And then I'm going to add it to my extrude. So whatever color is last right here is the one that's going to get rendered out. OK, so now I'm going to select this pink material. And under the attributes down here, uh, under selection, I can grab this selection tag and drag it in there. So now only this front cap is being affected by that material. And that's really cool because I don't have to go in and make polygon selections or anything. It just does it automatically. Sweet. Another thing is that right now, the way that we're looking at this, it's just the viewport view. It's not actually what it's going to look like on the final render. So the way that you could preview what it's going to look like on the final render is by going up here to your render view. So you press and hold down, and then you go to render view. So this is what it's actually going to look like. It looks like a little more cleaner and brighter. You could even do an in interactive render region. So this is just so that only part of it, oops, only part of it is being previewed. And you can grab this little arrow right here and pull it up so that you get an even better resolution. And you can make it smaller, like if you just want to focus on one part and it's taking too long to render out the whole scene, you can just focus on one little part that you want to tweak. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. OK, so now that we've got our cool looking text, I'm going to add a camera. And the way you do that is by going here to the camera menu, add camera. And now we've got a camera in our object manager. And I'm going to activate it by clicking this little square right here. So now we're actually using the camera to look at our scene. And if you navigate around with the camera, it gets a little weird. So I just click on the object, and it looks a little smoother, like follows along a little better. 
So I'm gonna set up my scene to the first position that I want. So let's say that I want it right there. And then down here's my timeline. I'm gonna go to the first keyframe. I'm gonna select my camera. And right here under the camera coordinates, um, you can actually manually position each individual coordinate like X, Y, Z, and rotations, scale. And you do that by hitting this keyframe, and then it makes a keyframe. But a different way you could do it is by just hitting this little record active objects keyframe. And when you hit that, it sets up keyframes for all of your different coordinates and positions and rotations. So now I want to set up um, my final position. So I'm going to grab this, bring it all the way to my last keyframe, and then I'm going to rotate my camera how in the last position that I want it to be in. So let's say that I want it there. And I'm going to hit this keyframe, then I'm going to hit play. Now we've got a simple camera animation. Cool. So I can't actually export this from C4D Lite. You have to do it through After Effects. But before we do that, I'm going to go into the settings and make sure that it's the right size that I want it. So I'm going to hit the Edit Render Settings icon. Then I get this window. And yours might look different if you only have light. So just go to Output. Here I'm going to lock this ratio, set this to 1920. I'm going to change my frame rate to 24. And then frame range, right now it's just at current frame, and it's only set to one frame. So I'm going to set it to all frames. Okay. And in order to get it to see, or to After Effects, you just hit Save. Say yes. Then I go back to my After Effects project, and it should be right here in the project panel. You grab it, drag it into this comp, and now it's in here. So now we've got some 3D in After Effects. When you select the C4D layer, you get this effect control with Cineware by, by Maxon. And right here you get this render option. So right now we're looking at the viewport, which is not the final render. So you want to go to current to see what it's going to look like for the final render. So now, you know, we've got this really cool 3D text layer that we can mess around with. And then another thing you can actually do is if I go back to C4D and I make another material, say we want to make this one yellow. And then I replace the pink with the yellow, and I hit save, go back to After Effects, and it actually updates it in here. So any changes that you make in C4D are going to reflect in After Effects. And I'm going to actually change this back to pink because I think it looks better. And you could even go ahead and you know add more stuff, like you could add this sphere. Make it smaller. Add a bunch of smears. Okay. There's another sphere. Make it smaller. And then I'm just going to add different colors to these spheres. And I'm going to hit save. Go back to After Effects. And there you go. So that's really cool that it can just automatically update like that. And I'm going to save this project before it crashes. And once you have this in here, you can composite it with footage or an other animations or just anything that you can do in After Effects. Now you can do it with this 3D layer. So I'm just going to go ahead and add 
a solid. Okay. And then I'm going to show you how you could actually finally render this out. So I'm going to go to composition, add to render queue, make sure my output mode is good. Quick time, da -da 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 -da, looks good. Then I'm going to choose my location, that looks good. And I'm going to render it out. And now, I've got an MOV with my C4D. Ta-da! There you have it. So a really cool way to start off with 3D software. And if you have Creative Cloud, you don't have to pay extra money or anything for it. It's already there. Another thing you could do is render out stills. So if you aren't really into animation, but you just want to use 3D, I'll just turn off the solid layer so that we have a transparent background. And I'm going to pick a frame that I like. So I'm just going to go with this one. Then I'm going to go to Composition, Add to Render Cube, go to the Output Module right here under Format, make a PNG sequence. And under channel, make sure you have RGB plus alpha so that you get your transparent background. Hit OK. Under render settings, I'm going to go to custom and change this to zero so that I only have one frame. OK. To make sure that it's saving out to the correct place, render that out. And now we've got a PNG with transparency. So what you could do now is bring this into Photoshop. And once you're in here, you can composite it any way you like. So I'm going to add one of these cool gradients. Let's see. This one looks cool. OK, OK. Then you could even add adjustment layers. So let's set some levels. I'm going to hold down the Option key. And once I get that little pointing square, I'm going to click it so it only affects the bottom layer. And then I'm going to make it pop because that's what clients love. Oh, too much pop. OK. Then I'm going to make another layer. And I'm going to go ahead and pick this cool brush that I found online. And you can add little blinks. Bling, 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 bling. And add little shiny bling blings all over the place because I like shiny stuff. So shiny. Yeah. So, yeah. And then you could even, you know, go further and add your own illustrations in here. So it could be like, hey. I'm pretty sure you guys could do a better job than me. Thanks for watching. And I just want to give a big shout out to Adobe for sponsoring DMALA who makes these videos possible as well as our live stream interviews with industry professionals. Until next time.